That is a cold third strike. Verlander has struck out eight of the first nine. All called third strikes here in the third inning. Ten strikeouts to wrap up the season with 18 victories and a 1.75 ERA. What a season for Justin Verlander, who is going to win the 2022 American League Cy Young Award. Five innings last night to get those 10 strikeouts. What a season. Who would have thought he would have been this good after having Tommy John surgery? I got the answer for you. It was Justin Verlander who said that he is the least surprised that he was here. I think I'm probably the least surprised person that I'm here. Um, you know, everybody wants to, to, to ask me, you know, how amazed are you? You know, for me, I'm not. I, I, you know, I know how hard I worked. I know how good I felt. I know how good the rehab went. Um, you know, I know how good my body felt coming into the season. Um, you know, so... Yeah, to me, this is um, maybe not what was supposed to happen, but what I expected to happen. I didn't know exactly how good the season would be, but I thought I would be me when I'm healthy, um, which is usually pretty good. Verlander, to his credit, and I like hearing this, even though it's probably lip service. Verlander said after last night's game that he's not thinking about his third Cy Young, which, again, he's going to win. Uh, I, I don't think it's the right time to talk about that, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> you know, with the postseason coming up, personal athletes uh, aren't really something I try to think about. But I intentionally try not to. Hell yeah. Don't you love that? I mean, it's semantics. Of course he's going to be happy about it. And he should be happy about it. That he was able to win the Cy Young Award after having a career best season at age 39 is bleeping nuts. 2011, he won the bleeping MVP, and this is a significantly better year. Maybe not from a strikeout perspective. He's 39, 18-4, and four, with a 1.75 ERA, the lowest for a qualified pitcher, excluding the pandemic season, since Pedro Martinez had a 1.74 in 2000, which I saw firsthand, and he was lights out. That was in Pedro's prime, though. That was when Pedro was the best pitcher in baseball with the filthiest stuff. Verlander did this at 39, coming off of Tommy John's surgery, with the best ERA of his career. 2.4 in 2011 when he won the MVP. 1.75. And he had Tommy John's surgery. Eight strikeouts in a row. Ten strikeouts last night. What a year, and hopefully that's not the last we see of him in a regular uh, season for the Houston Astros. Of course, he will pitch for them in the playoffs. And I do think that one of the reasons that there might be some drama between Jim Crane, James Click, could have to do with how maybe Click wants to approach Justin Verlander, perhaps moving on this offseason, seeing as Verlander's probably going to opt out given the year that he's just had. And Jim Crane, who seems to love Justin Verlander like an adopted son. We will see where that goes. But my question to you right now, where the hell does Justin Verlander rank all time among Houston athletes? And something that when I was doing research this morning on this subject, I was surprised by. There haven't been that many Houston athletes who have been playing for a professional sports team on the three major teams in town for really long period of time we've, we've seen it with the, the Houston Texans of late but outside of Jeff Bagwell who was there from 1991 to 2005 he was here Craig Biggio here from 1988 through 2007 Andre Johnson 2003 through 2014 and of course Hakeem Olajuwon who was technically here from 1980 through 2001 if you count his time with the University of Houston. like For the most part, a lot of these guys haven't been there that long. And by the way, James Harden was excluded from this list. I will never put somebody that made me hate basketball on a list. And this was before he quit his way out of town. You will never have heard anyone more consistent on James Harden than I always was. I was the one person 
the one person who from the start was like, this guy sucked in the 2012 NBA Finals. Are we really counting on this guy to be good in the playoffs again? And guess what? He never was after the fact. But I don't know. It's just me. Should I pat myself on the back for it? Yes, because a lot of you loser Rocket fans out there that still kiss his ass after he quit on you disgust me. He is not on this list. He never will be on this list. And if you put him on this list, I hate you. I do. I hate you. If you like that, you like watching that, do you have pride in your ba- in your basketball team here in town, watching that guy play, flopping around, not playing any defense, putting no energy on that side of things, and shooting a million threes in a game despite being a 35% three-point shooter, which is 261st all time? Hell no. First in attempts, 261st in three-point percentage. I'm done. Harden ran done. Where does Justin Verlander rank among the top Houston athletes in Houston sports history? Number one, it has to be be Hakeem Olajuwon. It's not close. In fact, I think Hakeem is in a conversation by himself. Here, of course, is, you know, what happened in the NBA Finals against the Orlando Magic late in the game. Drexler puts the ball on Anderson. You heard Anderson there, too. This was after Anderson missed all those free throws. I mean, what an absolute disastrous choke job by the Orlando Magic in those finals. Hakeem Olajuwon, two-time NBA champion, 1994 MVP, two-times final MVP, 12-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA first team, and three-time Final Four, 1982, 1983, 1984 with the NCAA player, uh, NCAA tournament player of the year award in 1983. Not debatable. If, you, if you're even going to try to come at me with somebody else, you're crazy. It's, it's Hakeem and it's everybody else here in Houston. But that's where it gets interesting. Who's number two in a city that has really only seen those two professional titles? I think you got to put Jose Altuve number two. Don't get mad at me. But from 2011 through today, he won an MVP. An ALCS MVP, a World Series, three-time batting champion, four-time hit leader, two-time stolen base leader. That blows anything that Craig Biggio, Jeff Bagwell did out of the water, unless you want to talk about Jeff Bagwell's home runs. 449 for his career. Number three, and this is where I'm putting Justin Verlander. Justin Verlander, I think, from 2017 to today, now that he is going to win the 2022 American League Cy Young, I think he's the third best athlete in this city's history, given what he did. And I know he missed like, what, a year and a half? But you win the World Series in 2017. You're the Cy Young Award winner in 2019 and 2022. Wins leader in 2019. ERA leader in 2019. Uh, wins leader in 2022. Strikeout leader in 2018. Verlander's number three for me. I'm going to continue to go through the list, and I'm sure that you guys have some different thoughts. 713-780-3776. Number four, Moses Malone. Played for the Rockets from 1976 through 1982. Had the nickname the chairman of the board. Fantastic nickname. Two MVPs. That matters. Led the Rockets to the finals in 1980 and 1981. Two-time first-team All-NBA, two-time second-team All-NBA while he was with the Rockets. So he played for a ton of teams over the course of his career. But I feel like he's forgotten in the grand scheme of things when it comes to Great players in Houston sports history. Number five, J.J. Watt. Don't get mad at me. I know. Lots of injuries. Corny. But he won the Defensive Player of the Year three times. He was a sack leader twice. Is he not the best defensive player that you ever saw firsthand? Even if he wasn't able to get it done in big games against big teams, which is always going to be held against him? Got to be number five. Number six, Earl Campbell. Earl Campbell was the MVP in 1979. I think the problem for Earl Campbell is that he didn't stay with Houston that long, 78 to 84, played great in 78, 79, and 1980. I mean, he really was incredible. Such a quick blip on the radar. So I'm holding, I guess, the amount of time that he did it against him a little bit here, but he's definitely up there. Number seven, I put Nolan Ryan here. Nolan Ryan had a ton of strikeouts. I was surprised by the lack of individual awards that Nolan Ryan had along the way, and maybe that shouldn't be held against him. But he never won the Cy Young Award, which I was surprised to learn. Did lead the National League in strikeouts in 1987 and 1988. He led the National League in ERA in 1981 and 1987. So I have him at number seven. Eight, I have Jeff Bagwell. World Series appearance, four-time All-Star, 94 MVP. That was a strike-shortened season, so a weird one. Craig Biggio, I have from 1988 to 2007. A World Series appearance, seven-time All-Star. Stolen base leader once, 3,000 hits. And then I have Andre Johnson at number 10, 2003 to 2014. Two-time first-team All-Pro, led the NFL in receptions in 2006 and 2008. Receiving yards, 2008 and 2009. And the honorable mention, James Harden, again, go get bleeped. But he did have an MVP. 
He was six time first team all NBA, scoring champion from nineteen eight or from excuse me, from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty. Sean Mays, you have a thought. Yeah, it doesn't seem that honorable of a mention. Fair enough. It's, you said honorable mention I mentioned James him. Harden get Listen, bleeped. <laughs> but I mean it's not honorable. Yeah, it's whatever. dishonorable. If, if, I'm sorry. If you like that, I, I just I, I just am disgusted by you as a basketball fan. I really am. You can't even put him tenth? No. No, he gets honorable mention. We mentioned him in this eleventh. No. No, I, I I put Ralph Sampson over him. 12th. 1983 to 1987. Nope, Clyde Drexler, 1995 through 1998, and played for the Kooks. But they weren't here long enough to qualify for this list. Is Case Keenum on this list? I, I'd rather have Case Keenum on this list than I would read James Harden. Has Roger Case, Clemens! Did Case Keenum play in Houston longer than Justin Verlander? Um, Because he played for the Cougars have. for like six years. He was there for six years. <laughs> That's a good question. We wanted to do some research on that. Uh, I, I mean... I'd rather put Roger Clemens in there, and he was, you know, how long was he there? What, 2004 through 2006? Three years, yeah. Cy Young in 2004, and did lead them to a World Series. I forgot that he won a Cy Young. In yeah, yeah. I mean, crazy. shoot. It's, it's impressive now. I mean, might have been performance enhanced, but what? Roger Clemens, more honor than James Harden. <laughs> no doubting that. Roger Clemens wanted to compete in his 40s. James Harden might have retired at age 32 if the Rockets didn't give him his way and trade him out of town. Harden has to be out of the top 10. And if you have an argument against you, guess what? Against me, guess what? You know what? We we do say all takes matter here. We do, you know, be very inclusive. We are the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. Lifetime ban. Do if we you, say all takes matter? I don't think we do. All think, takes matter. I, I think that's the first time we said it. Well, we have. The most interactive sports talk show in Houston. All takes matter unless it's something that's positive towards James Harden. Then you are banned for life. We will We will hang up the phone on you immediately. We will change the wording of your text to make it seem like you're slandering James Harden. Okay? That's all we do. It's the one bit of censorship that we do. 